Hello Cancer, welcome to your reading for January. Happy New Year. This is for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising and Venus. Please make sure you check all your placements to get a clear picture of what's going on for you at this time. As always, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate for all of you. Please take the bits that do resonate and leave the rest behind for somebody else. All right, I'm sorry about my voice. I've been nursing a cold for the last few days. And anyway, oh, that wanted to show up. These cards are impossible to shuffle. All right, so I'm primarily a love reader. That's what I'm going to focus on. If anything else pops up, I will address it. Towards the end of the reading, I will be rolling dice to get some initials and sun signs and angel numbers for you. So make sure you stick around for that. All righty, let's see what we have for you. Cancer, stibus or antimony. This is still a very new deck for me, so I will have to refer to the book. And we have rotation. Interesting. All right, so now antimony is a card of the gray wolf. And this talks about, I mean, the key word that stood out to me in the book was corrosion and how the gray wolf is known to be fierce and is known to destroy most things on his path is there something that has been eating away at you cancer this could be anything right we had a lot of planets in retrograde in 2023 and though most of them are turning direct now there's still um aftermath there's still consequences of those planetary shifts is there something that is weighing heavily on you why i'm asking you that is because rotation this is technically the wheel of fortune or even the world card, right? The Ouroboros, the snake that eats itself. Some kind of pattern is repeating here. Ask yourself what that is. Now is the time, not just because it's the new year, but I think it's high time for a particular pattern in your life to come to an end because it can be more destructive than you realize over a course of time. It's almost like the repetition of this corrosion is it may not show itself. The destruction may not show itself immediately, but it's going to have long lasting effects on your psyche. And we don't want that. I knew I loved this deck. It opens up so many topics of conversation. But um, let's move on to your tarot. Now I am using the tarot of the light and the shadow and they're going to start off with a few shadow cards to see what it is that you must leave behind at this time. I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. Um, I feel like they're just gimmicks. But the New Year is a good time for us to reinvent ourselves, rebrand ourselves. The death card. interesting let me get them all out and then we'll talk about it before we pull the light cards the hermit hmm. the five of swords i like where this is going the seven of pentacles The wheel, you see, I was talking about the wheel of fortune and things that have been repetitive, that haven't been the best for you. And we have the empress. Beautiful. Bottom of the deck, we have the cosmic mirror. All right. With the death card and the seven of pentacles cancel, I feel like... One of the most important concepts that you need to leave behind in 2023 is investing in people who always disappoint you or situations that always disappoint you, situations that always come to an end. Cancerians can be famous for this. I'm a cancer son, right? So I'm speaking from experience. We don't like to give up on anything, right? We are... We're crabs, right? We have those claws. Once we hold on, we hold on for dear life. Even if the, whatever that concept is, is harming us in the process. 
there's a realization here about what is being repeated right with the wheel of fortune it's almost like there's a particular brand of seeds that you're buying again again and again and again right and the brand is just awful they're selling dormant seeds but you're determined to get a plant out of them not realizing it's not your fault the seeds are dormant they're not going to grow but you still want to keep investing your time love and energy in those seeds seeing if one day you'll see a shoot or a sprout with the hermit in the shadow aspect is quite interesting because this can talk about isolation but just for isolation's sake and again we can be very good at that we can hide into our shells and not come out for weeks the hermit is known to go into his shell the hermit crab if you're familiar with it is known to go into his shell but is known to dig deep for wisdom there's a reason why the hermit hermitizes on on top of that mountain because he's trying to teach himself something he's trying to tap into the ancient wisdom within his being but in the shadow the hermit hermitizes for nothing so the, these little bouts of isolation that we are prone to I'm not saying stop doing that, right? A lot of us are not very social people. But if you are isolating, make sure you are being productive with your time. Whether it's watching an educational film, it's reading a book, it's creating art, it's listening to beautiful music. Don't just sit and twiddle your thumbs. Because an empty mind is a devil's workshop. And it's interesting, I was having this conversation with somebody yesterday. Um don't keep your mind empty keep it engaged constantly now the empress and the five of swords i feel like a lot of you have not been taking care of yourselves you've been looking for shortcuts whether now this could be anything right this could be cosmetic procedures it could be losing weight it could be an awful crash diet it could be um working out one day and then forgetting about it for the next two weeks right i feel like consistency right now is the key to success in your life cancer the five of swords is a shortcut to success and we don't want to do that anymore do we there's something about the patterns in your life needing to be changed i'm not saying eliminate patterns entirely because we are creatures of habit and we do well with routine whatever routines you are setting now make sure that you can uphold them make sure that you can follow them so that you can benefit from them the most and i'm also getting not allowing other people access to your energy if they don't deserve to be in your life the empress can be somebody who doesn't realize their worth right regardless of gender it can be somebody who doesn't see themselves in the best light and with the five of swords it's like you're allowing just anybody in because you don't realize what you deserve you don't realize your worth cosmic mirror and the seven of wands i suddenly got some of you may be feeling that people are out to get you but i feel like a lot of that is internalized right we are mirrors we're all cosmic mirrors every single one of us whatever it is that we are feeling internally is what is reflected in our environment so however you see yourself is how other people are going to see you right this this is not about your beauty or your attraction or whatever this isn't about how you look this is about how you feel about yourself how do you feel about yourself right now once that concept that self concept changes you will see how your interaction with people will change how they look at you is going to change interesting let's get the light aspect and interestingly we have the hermit again at the bottom of the deck whoop Oh goodness. 
powerful cards oh i did not want to stay in my hand we have the devil and we have judgment i think judgment came out first Oof, complicated energy the three of swords would you believe it the seven of pentacles in the exact same position as the shadow card wow this is a powerful reading the tower i'm going to have to get a crossing card between the devil and the tower this is insane and the 9 of cups let's get a crossing card before we see the bottom we have the high priestess a very interesting reading bottom of the deck we have the hanged man with the queen of wands and the 10 of swords with judgment now it is possible that a lot of these concepts that i was talking about a lot of these corrosive patterns that i was talking about may come back to haunt you and because you've invested so much in these concepts it may be difficult for you to turn a blind eye to them and when i say concepts most of the time i mean people relationships with the devil right here some of you could just very easily deal, be dealing with a capricorn doesn't have to be but there has to be a dissolving of the shadow here a dissolving of the shadow within yourself and whatever you perceive in other people i'm not saying again turn a blind eye to people's faults no but there has to be this almost seeing the best in a person because everyone's made of light as well as the dark not one person cannot be full of just shadow trying to wean out the good in somebody and seeing if that good even that one single point is good enough for you or not don't look at the bad and make your decision right because we can be blind to our own faults sometimes look at the good and see if it's good enough that's what i'm getting here i'm also getting that if you have been dealing with somebody who could have been part of that very corrosive pattern right here i feel like there's a shift in their energy there's a fall of ego that i'm seeing here the devil very saturnian energy can be a very egoistic archetype it can be somebody who doesn't rely on their intuition or their higher self to make decisions it's a very material plane energy but the tower talks about the ego falling it talks about the ego dissolving and the high priestess here is a beautiful energy of that higher self being given a nod someone here that you have been dealing with though they may have been part of that corrosive pattern i feel like there's a return for the better if i had gotten just these cards and i wasn't even looking at the shadow right i was looking at this as a normal tarot deck i wouldn't have said what i'm saying i would have said the past is coming and repeating itself but because we're looking at the shadow as well as the light this this deck is completely different to me now i'm forced to see just the good you know what i mean with the 3 of swords and the 9 of cups if wishes were not fulfilled in this connection that is changing if you were met with pain and heartbreak and nothing else that is changing and with the hanged man there is this beautiful theme of understanding empathy compassion and sacrifice 
all the things that the ego gets in the way of. But there's a dissolvement of ego, is there not? I did see the Ten of Swords at the bottom of the deck. And the Ten of Swords is the most painful card in the tarot. But the Ten of Swords is also rock bottom. The only way forward is up. I feel whatever the situation is that you've been dealing with that was highly corrosive and repetitive in nature, there's a course correction happening. I'm tempted to get another card. I was right. The fool. The universe is giving you a little push. Again, I'm a random person on YouTube reading cards. I don't know how this is going to play out. But the energy right now is conducive to a brand new leap of faith with whoever this is. Dancing with the devil. I think that's what I'm going to title your reading. They may step on your toes, but they may not. They may twirl you just right. There's, there's a do-over that's begging to be happened. Again, I'm not sure how it's going to turn out. Don't blame me if, if it doesn't turn out well. But I, I seriously feel that whoever this is, is turning over a new leaf. And I think we all are to a very large extent, are we not? The turn of a new year, everything begins afresh. Shedding an old skin behind, so why not them? This antimony, I feel, this corrosion is, is turning into um, softness. Or the patina that is forming around that corrosed, that corrosive jar. It's a thing of beauty now instead of a thing of destruction. Very interesting. Okay. Let's get you some dice to close this off. We have the number five. If you have been seeing triple five a lot, then this talks about change. Change, change. New things coming in. A brand new wheel. A brand new Arboros. We have cancer. <laughs> this is definitely your reading. You could be dealing with a cancer. You may have cancer heavily in your chart apart from just your son um, but this is about leaning into yourself not being disconnected from yourself the hermit can do that the hermit can disconnect from him or herself too truly connect with your essence cancer we're wonderful people so why not right i feel like it can be very easy for us to tap into other people's psyches and emotions and understand how we can help them but we forget to help ourselves sometimes. Need to do that more. Then we have Venus. Interesting. Venus is the planet of love as well as money. But where is Venus right now? Let me see. Venus is interestingly moving into Capricorn on the 23rd of January, the sign right opposite you. I feel that love is going to take on a more serious tone. Venus in Sagittarius can be a little wishy-washy. It can be a little happy-go-lucky. It can be a little too adventurous. But there's a settling down when Venus is in Capricorn. Even though Venus doesn't love being in Capricorn, the, the seriousness that comes with it is something that we could do well with, especially being Cancerians. All right. Let's get you some initials. I have left no space for myself. We have the letters C, C again. Interesting. We have two P's. We have the letter B, J, and W. These could be your initials. They could be the initials of the people you're dealing with. Doesn't have to be. Just a special mention for those of you who've seen your initials here today. All right, Cancer, that was it. I hope this helped. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.